As you're saying, it's a big, big uh, venue where a lot of people are sitting, so the air quality there was... Oh, really bad? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and only boys, you know? <laughs> yeah, they want it cold, right? <laughs> yeah, we've learned that. All right, well, game three uh, started, David. What are we seeing? It's another Sicilian defence, this time slightly less cagey than the first game of today. It's the open Sicilian, Yana Pomeci, oh. going on the attack early. And this last pawn move by White, pushing a pawn mid White G pawn forward, shows his aggression. But Magnus reacts instantly. This is the height of opening fashion. This is one of the most trendy uh, lines, the most trendy variations in chess right now. We saw a trade of knights, white, uh, black pushing a pawn forward. Now white is the first to castle. Black really needs to catch up on piece development, though. If you look at all of black's kingside pieces, all of the pieces on this side of the board, they're still asleep. About Napomniachi's choice is that uh, we're actually following a game that Niels Grandelia has played against Magnus Carlsen. Just look at the black pieces. He needs to bring them out, he does. He yeah. leaps out with the Black Knight, and White just guards two pawns with this last push. One thing that's super interesting is actually, you know, when I've uh, looked through the games, I always see one name that stands out that Magnus is, uh, has been following, and it's always Jordan Van Forest, who was his second in the World Championship match. Magnus has been really impressed with the young Dutchman. Yeah, um, we talked about air quality, but Georgian Van Forest, I think he was a breath of fresh air for the uh, Magnus team at the World Championship match. So Napomniachi just preempting that, expecting that in advance and stepping back with his queen. That's it's basically the World Championship match, just yeah. with lower stakes, lower prize money, slightly yeah. lower rated players, but and just a slightly as much shorter match. Uh, the number two Scandinavian player. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a battle. That's just going to be, that's going to ruin the friendship. Mm. Oh, you're too nice, Ivanka. I would do anything to be a friend. <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe a launch pad for a future attack by White's Knight or White's Bishop. He doesn't do this, he plays the safer option. And uh, talking of targeting pieces, the White Knight was the target. Now the Black Knight on the side of the board is the big, big target. And I guess then it's looking good for him so far. This could be the game he makes that comeback. Yeah, I just think a great opening choice. Um, when you need to win, it's nice to have these imbalances. And look at this, actually, exactly what I showed on the board has just happened. Black did try and challenge in the centre. This is thematic in the Sicilian. Uh, when you're on the black side, you want to explode open the centre of the board. But now, after the bishop hit the knight, it was defended, and this exchange, this trade, favours white. The black rook in the corner would drop off. Uh, so, OK, he doesn't even feel the need to block it up. Maybe being more ambitious in the Polnieschi, he brings his knight in already going for this isolated, doubled, weak pawn on the edge of the board. And from there, he'll jump in towards the Black King. Yeah, it's, it's sharpening up. Yeah. And I can actually see that this has kind of been analysed in July 2021, but it didn't look good for Black. OK, so it's been analysed. This would be a real disaster for Magnus Carlsen, walking into a variation that is known. And OK, the evaluation bar saying Black is fine-ish now, but from a practical point of view, unless he's 100% sure, I think he's going to walk into danger. This Black King stuck in the middle is going to be stranded there for a long, long time. Well, I faced a very sharp opening against the Karakhan and uh, I didn't know my theory and I, I lost very Whoa! quickly. And What happened? Yeah, uh, well, the... Jan playing a very surprising move, actually hitting the Black Queen with the White Bishop, but this can be blocked by a pawn move. I'm wondering if the evaluation bar will correct itself. Yeah, I mean, this still feels super sharp and to me, Yana Pomnici may be still in preparation. So, okay. yeah, that evaluation bar, let's ignore it for now. It's going to swing and swing and swing, as it has done throughout the whole final yeah. yesterday and today. Um, yeah, I so still, a human move. Yeah, it's a very human move. Okay. I think we'll see some fireworks. And there are some ideas behind it. I think Yan is actually getting ready for some really surprising sacrifices. Uh, I think Black is in big practical trouble. Okay, he does drop back with his queen. Uh, now he wants to trade off. So Black's queen threatening to capture the white queen. White's queen is just going to move out the way. Coming, but he was like, OK, I'll go for it. The, the pawn can be pushed in the g-file and my knight is on the f-file, but that's OK. Like, I wouldn't be brave enough to do that. Um, and it was a theoretical draw. No, I know that now. You know that now. <laughs> is, that, is that something you've actively worked on since your first over-the-board experience? If Magnus plays, OK, he just brings his rook across. Firstly, as Yavanka mentioned, queen takes pawn was a bad move because now the bishop would actually hit the queen and hit the rook a knight sacrifice which didn't work. This one, he made this knight check after a couple of minutes of thinking, but it was the wrong decision. And uh, maybe just at that critical moment, investing another two minutes would have helped him uh, find a stronger idea. And now the evaluation bar really hating White's position. It can even sacrifice, okay, and there you go. The rook comes into the second rank. Wow. It's the best move, but it's also the most obvious move. So of mm. course Magnus was gonna find it. And Magnus just 
one chance. He's, he's, he was given one chance in the last game. He seized it. Now one chance in this game. So far, he's seized it. And yeah, that's why he's the world champion. He is ruthless. And meanwhile, OK, Jan jumping in with the queen. That's brave. Allowing Black's rooks to come into the position. There is a threat from white. And it seems like it happened to Nepomniachtchi twice. Yeah. Um, so Magnus just offering the trade of queens. And I, okay, I, white's I love... being forced back. Uh, and then some queen checks to follow up. I'm not sure that works. Instead, he just brings his rooks down. How do you defend? I mean, can you just ignore everything and just go queen takes bishop and... Yeah, I think maybe he could have tried that, but I think there would have been some checkmating ideas mm. um, if that had happened. So white dropping back the bishop to defend the pawn in front of the white king, but delivering checkmate mm. at the very end. Well, he's not gone for that. He's not gone for it, he's but gone. maybe finding a different, uh, different strong path. Magnus in the current position taking this bishop, and now after king takes, he's jumping in with the black queen. Still strong, but your move winning on the spot, Katrina, I think. And now the white king is able to hide in the corner, maybe. And uh, Jan, is he living to fight another day or has Magnus got a follow-up here? I think he's going to do Katrina's idea. There we go. There we there go. go, same idea. And, uh... and what a hard fought and fantastic final by Jan Pomniachi. We know he's been under a lot of pressure. A lot of things has been on his mind. It must have been hard to focus. He has played some fantastic games, but there it is. It ends here. Magnus Carlsen winning two games today. He is the winner of the Air Things Master after an incredible final with a great Jan Pomniachi. But Magnus Carlsen showing his genius in this final. We've had incredible.